Hiya, have I got a dessert for you. This is a classic homemade from scratch banana pudding. And let me tell you, it is amazing. This is absolutely the signature dessert for my mother-in-law. Everybody called her Mama. And I think I've just about mastered it. I've not mastered her meatloaf yet, but I think I've about got the banana pudding down. <laughs> Guys, you're gonna have fun making it and you're gonna be amazed at how simple it is and delicious. Welcome back to In the Kitchen with Tabby. Let's get cooking. All right, friends, let's get this banana pudding put together. So I already have my sugar in my pan. This is just a heavy, heavy saucepan. And I will have the recipe on my website, so don't worry about writing anything down right now. But um, I've got my sugar in here, and I'm going to add to that my all-purpose flour. Now I'm going to take this whisk and just whisk that up a little bit and let that sugar kind of help me break up any clumps that might be in that flour. So we're just going to break all of those clumps up, whisk that in really good. Perfect. That flour is going to be our thickening agent. So that's what's going to help us thicken up the pudding. So now to that, I'm going to add four cups of milk. I'm using vitamin D whole milk for this. You could use 2%, but I think it sets up a little nicer. I don't have it in my holder like I normally do. Um, it sets up a little nicer if you use whole milk, but you can use 2%. Okay, now I'm gonna turn my eye on. I'm gonna put this on medium high, about five and a half or six. And I'm gonna use my whisk at first to just whisk all of this together. Get all of that sugar and flour dissolved really nicely. And then we will switch to the wooden spoon. Now off to the side here, I have my egg yolks in a little bowl and I have already beat those up really well with a fork. So just give them, give them a really good mix. So we're gonna cook this milk and sugar and flour mixture until it just starts to steam. You want it to just start to get warm. And at that point, then we're gonna dip some out and put it into our egg yolks. You wanna do that before it gets too hot, otherwise it will cook the eggs. So you're just tempering those eggs. You don't want them to be scrambled eggs when you put them in there for the pudding. I think that sugar is just about dissolved. So I'm gonna switch over to my wooden spoon here in just a second. I think that's good. So now I'm gonna switch over to my spoon. And you don't have to stir this constantly, but I like to. I just think it keeps any lumps from forming and it keeps it from sticking to the bottom of the pan. So as soon as I turn the eye on, I'm right here at this stove. I'm not gonna move until I'm done. I wanna make sure that it does not Get lumpy or stick to the bottom. So I'm just going to stand here and give this a nice gentle stir with my spoon until it just starts to get warm and when it gets to that point I'll come back and we'll take the next step together. Hang tight. All right the milk is ready so I'm going to dip. This is just about a three-fourths of a cup so about a half a cup to three-fourths of a cup and I'm just going to slowly pour that into my eggs and mix that up all at the same time. Just give that a good mix. And then I have my little spatula here to get it out with, but I'm going to slowly put this into the pan here and just stir it. Don't want to go too fast because you don't want those eggs to scramble. Okay, let's get the rest of those yolks out of there. I am using duck eggs or duck yolks, so they are a little thicker than chicken eggs are, but you can certainly use chicken eggs. That's totally fine. All right, now we stir and we wait. This is probably going to take about 15 minutes or so. We want to stir this now. Like I said, I stir it constantly. Um, you don't have to, you can stir it frequently, but I choose to stir it constantly. And when it comes to a nice full rolling boil, we're going to take it off the stove and then that's when we'll add our vanilla. So for the next 15 minutes or so, I will just be here stirring the pudding. All right, it's really starting to thicken up now. And so I'm going to bring the camera over and show you. This is when you really want to start stirring it constantly. You don't want to stir it occasionally at this point, otherwise it will stick to the bottom. So I'm going to bring the camera over so you can see. Hang on. It's 
so we are getting close I can feel that it's starting to want to bubble at the bottom and start to boil so I'm just going to keep stirring and stirring and stirring here you want to stir it constantly but gently getting all into those corners of the pan and all across the bottom so when you lift your spoon out you shouldn't have anything stuck to the bottom it should be nice and clean if you've got stuff stuck to the bottom of that spoon then you're going to have some issue on the bottom of your of your pudding <laughs> but that's part of the reason why i like to stir it constantly from the get-go because that way i know that that is not going to happen sure is smelling good <laughs> even without the vanilla it smells really good it is really getting nice and thick now and it's been about 11 minutes since i started of course every eye every stove is different so yours might take less or it might take longer than 15 minutes but that's typically what mine is about 15 to 17 I've had it take 17 minutes but usually right at that 15 minute mark is when it starts to give me a nice full boil full rolling boil I should say I'm gonna keep stirring and when it is ready I'll come back hang on we are just about there now I wanted to tell you a full rolling boil is different than just bringing it to a boil if you bring it to a boil that means that when you're stirring you won't see it boiling but if you stop stirring it will begin to boil a full rolling boil is a boil that boils whether whether you're stirring or not so even as I'm stirring I can see bubbles coming up and boiling even though I'm making that stirring action so that's the difference between just a boil and a full rolling boil just in case you were curious. That was one of the questions I asked my mamaw, Dale's mom. I always called her mamaw, but that was one of the questions I asked her too. What's the difference between just a boil and a full rolling boil? And she taught me that. So just want to share that little bit of wisdom with you. All right, we are there. It is boiling now, even though I am stirring it is still boiling through my stirrer so I'm going to go ahead and take it off of the heat turn that off and I'm gonna go ahead and add my vanilla get that stirred in now this same recipe is plain vanilla pudding you can just call it plain vanilla pudding or you can also use this as the base for a coconut cream pie if you'd like at this point we would just throw some coconut in there and make it a coconut cream pie so it's the same basic pudding recipe the same base recipe you just add the coconut to it to make it a coconut cream all right that is it my friends we're ready to put this banana pudding together all right, I'm gonna take it over to the table. That's where I've got my pans ready. Here we go. Now, normally I would put this in a big serving bowl, um, but I'm doing it in two individual uh, disposable pans because I'm gonna share some with our neighbor. So this is how I'm doing it today, but it would be the same exact process if you were putting it in a nice big serving bowl. So I have my vanilla wafers on the bottom and I'm going to slice my banana. So I'm just gonna take you can use as much or as little banana as you like. I'm using two bananas per pan on this one. So normally if I was putting it in a big serving bowl, I would be using all four bananas in the, in the bowl. So we're going to do two layers. We've got the vanilla wafers and the bananas, and then we're going to do a layer of the pudding, and then we'll repeat that. Vanilla wafers, bananas, and end with the pudding. And this is still pretty runny because it's still very hot. But as it cools, we're going to put it in the refrigerator. And as it cools, it will set up and get a little thicker. Well, a lot thicker. <laughs> you can crush your cookies up if you want, or you can leave them whole like I am, however you want to do it. You could also use the uh, Chessman cookies, if you know what those are, the Pepperidge Farms, I think it is, Chessman cookies. Those are also really good, but this is the traditional way that Dale's mom always made it. So this is the way I like to make it. And it usually takes the whole box. This is a 15 ounce box. 
It usually takes the whole box for the big bowl that we do. So I think it's probably going to take the whole box for these pans as well. Okay, get our second layer of bananas on there. Let's put our final layer of pudding on here. Now I'm just going to take a couple of these vanilla wafers and just crush them up a little bit on the top. And there you have it. Classic, homemade from scratch, banana pudding. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh, I wish you could smell it. It smells so good. All right, let's get the other one put together. I'm gonna give that one to our neighbors. So we're gonna get this one put together and then I'll taste test this one. All right, there's our second one. Isn't that beautiful? It's a very rustic kind of dessert for me. It doesn't have to be perfect. There's nothing fancy about it. It's just really good. <laughs> it's time for a taste test. It is still warm, so this is going to be a little bit more creamy than what it will be if it sets up in the refrigerator for a little bit. But I kind of, I kind of like it like this. It is. Isn't that beautiful? Just such a pretty dessert. All right, let's get a banana and a cookie. Thank you, Lord, for this food. Amen. Mm. It just feels like home. <laughs> I think my mother-in-law would be proud. It is really delicious, you guys. Such a simple and easy recipe to make, but so much flavor. It's absolutely delicious. So if you've been craving banana pudding like I have, and if you love it like I do, make this one. It's so easy to throw together. A little bit of time stirring it up, and then you just layer it up together with those vanilla wafers and the banana, and you're set. Your family's gonna be really, really happy. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks so much for coming into the kitchen with me and making a memory, making a banana pudding, one of Mama's absolute signature desserts. Guys, remember, Christ is the unseen guest at every dinner table and the silent listener at every conversation. So just make sure those words coming out of your mouth are pure and sweet like honey, that you're lifting each other up, shining your light bright, and just loving on each other because that's what we're called to do. Don't forget, you'll find the link to this recipe in the comments under the Facebook and Instagram post. And you will also find a link to the recipe in the description, the full description under the YouTube video. Also, you'll find the recipe. You can print it out and watch the video again on my website, inthekitchenwithtabby.com. One last thing, don't forget my new cookbook, Pure and Sweet Recipes in the Kitchen with Tabby, coming out in November, but I'm taking pre-orders now, so make sure you get yours. They should be in my hands by the end of October or the first week of November. I'll get those signed and get them sent right out to you. I'm buying a limited quantity to start with, so make sure you get your order in so you don't miss out. All right, I think that's it, guys. I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. I hope it gets better and better every minute that goes by. And I love you so much, but don't forget, God loves you even more than I do. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.